In this session, you will add steel purlins spanning between the wood supports. You will want to pay attention to the spacing of the purlins, as well as their rotation so that they all sit correctly on the wood supports. You will first create the framing on the first three bays. Then you can copy it to the remaining bays since the spacing repeats. Select the steel framing tool from the structural tab on the ribbon. Set the catalog item to P1 purlins. This is a steel tube member already created for this project in the Workset library. You will place the section between two of the wood supports. Set the placement point to bottom center. Set the rotation to zero, but make sure to toggle on aligned. This will rotate the purlin to the slope of the wood member. Turn off the automatic coping and set the placement options to number of members and set that to one. Toggle on end members. This will create end members at both ends of the wood supporting members, which means there will be a total of three members in each bay. Set the support options to by insert line. This will be the placement line of the wood support. Select the first wood member. Select the second wood member. Repeat for the next two bays on both sides of the canopy. After that, the spacing repeats and you will be able to copy the completed framing when finished. Next, you will use the Move tool to move the end members in by 6 inches or 150 millimeters so that they are not sitting right on the ends of the wood supports. In the side view, make a selection set of the first set of end members. Select the Move tool, rotate the compass to the slope of the beam, and move the required distance. Repeat for each set of end members. Now you will add additional framing between these purlins. These are the members that will actually support the glass panels. Again, select the steel framing tool. This time select P2 purlins. This is a T-shape that will support the glass panels of the roof canopy. On the placement ribbon, set the maximum spacing to 6 feet or 2,000 millimeters and turn on end members. This will actually create evenly spaced members with a maximum spacing of 6 feet or 2,000 millimeters. Set the support option to by selected line. Select the outside edge of the first support member Start with the member nearest the valley between the two roofs. This will then be the start point of the purlin, which might be important later when modifying the purlins. Select the outside edge of the second support member. Repeat for the opposite side of the canopy. Then repeat for the next bay. And then complete for the last bay. Now that the members are placed, you will make some modifications to model exactly what you want the design to be. Select the Extend Form tool and set the method to Add Distance. Set the distance to 6 inches or 150 millimeters. Select each end of the square tubes to extend them over the gap between the wood supports. For the T-purlins, you will change the length of the member so that it extends beyond the purlin so that it supports the glass panels which are longer than the wood supports. Select all the T-shapes on the shorter side of the canopy. Select the Modify Properties tool. Change the length property to 9 feet or 2700 millimeters. Then simply data point in the view to accept. The length 
of all the selected members is changed, extending the length from the start point. Now select all the T-shapes on the longer side of the canopy. Again, select the Modify Properties tool. Change the length property to 10 foot 6 or 3150 millimeters. And again, data point in the view to accept. Next, you will trim the T supports where they meet at the valley between the two sides of the canopy. You want the edge of these members to align with the vertical edge of the wood column. First, Use the Extend Form tool to extend each member by 6 inches or 150 millimeters. In the side view, draw construction lines from the edge of the wood members vertically upwards. From the Forms tab, Select the Cut Solids by Curve tool. This tool can be used to trim the edges of structural members or even to cut penetrations through them. Set the cut direction to both and the mode to through. Select all the purlins on one side of the canopy, then select the trim line. Data point to preview the trim, then data point again to accept. All the members are trimmed. Then select all the members on the other side of the canopy. Then select the trim line, data point to preview the trim, and then data point to accept. Now the cut does not have to be a simple straight line. You could trim the other end of the T-shapes with a different profile. Draw a line string to represent the profile of the cut. Select all the T-shapes. Select the line string and data point to accept. Finally, use the Items tab on the Explorer dialog to select all the purlins that were placed. and copy them to the remaining bays. In this session, you have placed purlins using the Framing Between tool. You then modified those members to achieve the design intent. In the next session, you will go back to the architectural model and add the glass canopy panels. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.